how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Like it's huge. You know what I mean? Jess, it's California 2020. We can't see I stuff know, like that. I know, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Stepping Out series, a podcast all about ordinary people just like you and me who have decided to step out into the extraordinary despite the odds. My name's Anna Gray and my sincere hope is that as you listen today that you be both inspired and equipped to live out your purpose. And um, today we get to hear from Jessica Evans, an incredible individual. She is the associate producer at Hillsong Channel. Not only that, She's an incredible fighter, a boxer, a trainer, a fitness enthusiast, and all around, she can do anything. And um, she is an incredible individual, and I know you're gonna love hearing from her. But before we head into the podcast, can I just ask you, would you take a moment and like and subscribe to this video? What does that help us do? It helps this get out to more people who need to hear this message. With the way the YouTube algorithms work, those things matter. So help me out and just do a quick like and subscribe and share it with someone you think needs to hear this message. Over to the podcast. Thank you. You're really good at those introductions, by the way. Thanks. I've done them a couple of times now, working on them. <laughs> You're a professional. So, so Jess, um, this is what I know about you. Um, I've spoken to a couple of other people and kind of they have their one thing. Yeah. You are probably one of the most diversified people that I know. <laughs> Thank you. Because I wanted to talk about you talking about fitness or you talking about um, fitness, which you're extremely passionate about. Mm. You've done boxing. You've done also a lot of film. And that's currently your role yeah. within um, our, our church, Hillsong. So in your own words, who would you say you are putting everything in together? Oh, my gosh. Who am I? Oh, wow. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't like boxes. I, I love, I love the fact that people can be diverse. Um, and I maybe pride myself in being diverse. So I don't know if I'm necessarily one or the other. I just think that I'm a, a mixed bag. I think that's how okay, I probably so then, answer that. What would all the facets of your life be? Like, if you were to count the mixed bag, what's the mixed bag? Uh, well, I'm a lot of things. I'm a wife, and I am someone I, I love to help women, and I love to help people achieve whatever it is that they want when it comes to, like, their fitness or health goals. I'm also a, um, I'm a boxing trainer. I'm also a fighter. Um, I'm an athlete. I am a sister. I'm a daughter. I, um, when it comes to work, I'm also, I'm a, I'm a lot of things at work, but the main thing that I am at work is I'm a producer and I'm a floor manager. Um, I hope that answers your question. No, that was good. good. I mean, you also forgot about the part cause I know you. So I also know that you're also a scholar yourself. I know you study yeah. and read. I don't, and I, I do. I, I love those things. I guess for me, I don't necessarily classify that as something that I am because it's just something that I do so regularly. So I'm not thinking like I'm a scholar. Um, yeah. but I do, I love reading and I, um, I'm always reading something different. I love podcasts. I love learning. I love documentaries. I love movies that are mm -hmm. informative. But yeah, all of that. Okay, tell me this. Why? Okay, it, you have to know that's not normal, right? To really? be. Okay, I think we live in a bubble living in California, uh -huh. and also the type of people we get to be around in our church is yeah. extraordinary, world class people. So I think yeah. we do live in a bubble, and there's a lot of people who don't live this way, and they're not as growth driven. They're not always wanting to improve themselves. So. Even with that, do you feel like you've always wanted to grow and always wanted to expand and always wanted to step out? Or is this something you learned over time? You know, I think that there's different levels to how much you want to grow and step out. But ever since I was young, uh, 
I knew that I wanted to leave wherever I was. So I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri, which is, I mean, if you know anybody from the Midwest of America, like people, people sometimes don't even leave their town. Um, yep. I grew up in like a um, 35 to 4,000 person town um, in the middle of kind of like the country slash suburbia. And I just knew that I specifically wouldn't date people because I just knew that I wanted to leave. I didn't want anything to hold me back right. and I wanted to move on and I wanted to get out and I wanted to, and then I just decided one day that I was going to move across the country, <laughs> which was, which my parents didn't believe me at first. So I, I would definitely say that it's something that I've kind of always had inside of me. But then again, right. you know, like it's my responsibility to actually take that step. Um, and then I think that that has kind of like grown over time, you know, depending on people mm -hmm. that I'm around or situations that I'm in. Um, but it's something that has developed, but something I think as well, that's kind of always been there as well. So, okay. So since you know that it's not normal and let's imagine we're talking to someone from the Midwest right now, who's <laughs> never left their town. Okay. okay? And, um, what sort of backlash did you face when you were, when you decided to kind of I'm going to step out and kind of do what I think I need to do and move across the country. And also you moved to Sydney, which is even crazier. Yeah. To Australia. I know. Um, you know, there was a lot of mixed, I think, opinions and, uh, ideas from people, you know, there, there were some people that were incredibly excited for me and maybe a little bit like, right. Oh my gosh, like I wish I could do that, but I just never could. And then there were some people that were like a false happy, where they were like really excited for me, but then in the back of their mind, they're like, Pfft. like kind of like waiting for you to fail, so to speak. And, right. and I hate saying that, but that's just the reality. And then there were the people that were very limiting. And this is my favorite type of person because they are the people that push me into my future instead of hold me back. <laughs> um, and that's the people that are like, you could never do that. Like you probably, you shouldn't do that. That's really dangerous. They're snakes, they're spiders, they're sharks. I mean, like, wow the whole thing. And, um, but that I understood very from like a young age that that's actually just because they would never do that. Right. Um, so it was their own limiting beliefs of saying like, I could 100%. never do that. I think people talk out of the fear a lot of the time, right? Absolutely. They talk out of their own fear and their own self limiting beliefs and um, their own. Yeah. And their own experiences as well. So if mm. they've had bad experiences, I think that also will dictate whether or not like the decisions that they make. 100%. And I, I think one of my least favorite words that or phrases that people ever say is I could never, I could never move to Sydney. I, I mean, know. and all the, even the list of like, um, excuses that you gave, right? The spiders, their snakes, the <laughs> sharks. I mean, but legitimately people, I, I genuinely think a lot of people limit their life and stepping out into their purpose and just living bigger because yeah. of all these small little excuses. Absolutely. Um, and I think, and I like that you actually said excuses because that's exactly what they are. And, and, you know, even when it comes to like health and fitness, you would be amazed at the end point that people want to achieve, but all the excuses they have in between. They're like, I want this, but I can't drink water. I don't like water. I can't, I can't go walking. Oh, my knees and da, 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 da. I mean, fill in the blank. And I'm just like, honestly, you just need to make a decision and then do it. I love Nike yep. because they're like, just do it. And I really appreciate that. I'm a very black and white person in that regard, in terms of yep. like just decision making. Boom. Okay. You want this, you need to do this to achieve it. So have you dealt with, um, you know, you, you're, you're talking about making a decision and just doing it. But what about all the feelings that are kind of involved with that? How do you, do you feel like your feelings need to be in line with the decision you make or I, I, is it I personally, I don't trust my feelings. Um, because your feelings might, your feeling could be fear, for example, or like, right. like in feeling that pressure, anything worth taking is going to have some level of fear involved in it. Right. And I think that that is when you actually need to take the step even more, like live in that uncomfortable zone. I, I know mm. that that is very scary, but you know, even I, I heard like, um, 
an old teacher like talk about this about how actually it's like our responsibility to want to be in that uncomfortable zone because when you are comfortable that's where there's a lot of complacency happening and I've, I feel like I've kind of lo- I actually really enjoy I know it's a lot of hard work but I really enjoy being in that uncomfortable zone I can feel it I can feel mm. it in here and in here <laughs> but um I know that that is where I am learning and going to whatever it is next that I need to go to, if that makes sense. Mm. No, it does. Uh, So, I mean, what are the typical excuses you kind of hear when it comes to whether it's fitness or, yeah, like, let's just talk about fitness. Okay. What are the typical excuses you hear? (laughs) I, I think that people have a hard time accepting that something good is possible for them. And I know that sounds in or like the goals that they want to achieve. So let's say that's the good thing isn't possible. And I think that because they're so overwhelmed by where they want to be, they don't do anything. And that really saddens me because I think that what do they say? I mean, not that I'm condoning this, but this is just a saying. What's how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Like it's huge. (laughs) You know what I mean? Jess, it's California 2020. I know, but you know what I'm saying. (laughs) Nobody eats elephants, okay? (laughs) But um, it takes small things, one step at a time. Okay, let's just completely erase that example. Let's go with Bruce Lee. He's not worried (laughs) about all the different things he needs to learn. He's worried about the one thing he needs to learn and doing it 10,000 times. And I think that it's the exact same thing when it comes to our health, when it comes to making decisions for our future, for, you know, like, let's just take this as another example, because, you know, something I want to be one day, well, first, I want to be a good wife, what is good, you know what I mean? But, or, and I want to be a very um, active and, and good mother one day. Well, I can be overwhelmed with like my past and what I've been through and what I don't want to be, or, I can just focus on what I want to be, make small decisions. I think introspection is very important. Like, Mm. who am I? Look in the mirror. Who am I? What can I do to, like, help me take one step? Because that's all it is, just one step closer to what it is that I want to be. Mm. Two years from now, one year from now, two months from now, and so on. So I, to answer your question in full circle, I think that, a lot of the excuses that I hear from people are like, I couldn't do that. It's a lot of limiting beliefs. I could never do that. Um, I don't like this. Hmm. Um, what's another one? Like literally pure examples are like, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. I don't like that. Like, for example, the first question I ask everyone is like, how much water do you drink if you want to lose weight? People are like, I want to lose weight and all this stuff. And I'm always asking them, I'm like, um, how much water do you drink? And, yeah. oh, I, I don't like water. That might be the first <laughs> thing we need to fix. <laughs> but isn't that so interesting? Like, even for you, that is the first question you ask. Like, you know, people would typically think, okay, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to start exercising. And they want this whole grand thing. But then you're telling them, do you drink water? Honestly, and it's, it's so simple. I love that saying, or it's not a saying, it's like the keep it simple, stupid. It literally yep. is that. Like, I think that we really like That's make so things true. complex and we're like, oh my gosh, like this is, it's actually, it doesn't need to be overwhelming. It's so simple. Do you get sleep? Mm. Do you drink water? Do you n- limit your processed and refined foods? If you can do those small like decisions. small decisions, you'd actually see drastic improvement without even doing all of the extra stuff like the, I don't know, like working out and, and um, having like specific, I guess, like eating patterns. It's right. literally just those small things that will make a huge difference just to begin with. Yeah, I think even when you were talking about self-limiting beliefs, I think also one thing that a lot of people face is... Um, just failure. They've experienced failure in the past and they're 
they're they're scared to try again. Um, they've they've tried a bunch of things before, and they just did not succeed. Yeah. And I, I think the encouragement around that is find small wins, find small wins. Like even totally. if it isn't in fitness, just find small wins for yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you've read the book Atomic Habits before. I've heard of um, it, but I haven't read it. But I, yeah. Yeah. So the, so the basic premise pretty much is is an atomic habit is start with the lowest like start with the smallest form of the habit. So when they talk about exercising, for example, he legitimately says for two weeks, just find a time and put your training shoes on. And it feels like the dumbest thing in the world to do because you're just like, well, I'm not doing anything. It's just like, that's not the point. The point isn't actually going and doing it. It's the point is building the habit. Uh. So even if you want to learn how to become more disciplined, for example, you don't need to suddenly start you know, I'm going to read uh, two books in a week and, uh, you know, go for an extreme, which I think is the human tendency. But Absolutely. Rather, if you want to grow in your discipline, be like, OK, I'm going to brush my teeth every night. Yeah. And you just start there. And it's not about the brushing of teeth. It's about atomic habits. It's about the fact that you're slowly training yourself in simple, manageable ways. Um, totally. And when it comes to you know, when, it, yep. when it comes to even um, when it comes to water, for example, I even tell people, I don't tell people to jump straight to like, okay, start drinking a gallon. So I drink a gallon of water a day. That's just because that works for my lifestyle. That works for um, my activity levels, all of that. I tell people right. to start with just making sure if they're not water drinkers, just try to drink six to eight glasses a day, which is actually right. not a lot of water. And then once you do that for a couple of weeks, move to drinking a liter and a half. And then it's, it is, it has to be slow progress. Otherwise it, there will be no change. I love that. Just on a side note, I love the fact you switch from like liters to gallons. It makes me happy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, <laughs> I can hear you turned it off because of the car going off behind you. So I've known Jess for a while, and this is something I know about her. She uh, she loves getting things right, and she you're you're such a hard worker. I hope you know that. Like you work hard, you. and you're, you're, you're excellent that. at what you do, um, and it shows. I mean, I think I think even in your own life, your commitment to excellence has just opened up so many doors for you. And I'm sure you know that for Thank yourself. You. Uh, um, I think I mean, that I think, it, I think I appreciate that. Thank you. I think that it is like a combination of that, and then me just praying, literally, God, I need you to help me because. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I can't because I can't take no, all the I, credit, Anna Gray. Hundred percent. And actually, no. Let's talk about that because I think that's interesting. That I, I think some people believe that when you're stepping out in life, you've got to have A to Z figured out, right? You've got to have your forty, fifty year plan figured out. I know what retirement's going to look like, um, but I do think us both being in our 20s, sure, there's some people who have figured out what they want to do with their entire life and they're vision driven and whatnot. But sometimes the best thing you can do yeah. is just figure out, okay, let's start with a year, six months, two months, not allowing it to be overwhelming nor seeing the entire process. And um, I think with you just saying what you're saying, right? Um, you don't you haven't figured everything out. And that's yeah, okay. I don't, you know, and you're just and you're just doing the best you can with the vision you have I, I think in scripture it even talks about like god lighting your steps and yeah. it's almost this idea of like a lamp of one step at a time and you know we've heard in sermons before if it was to show us the entire journey we'd be like bye i'm out <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> but it is true yeah i agree well what's interesting is like uh, i i do know some people that are like i heard the word from the lord and i did this 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 and whatever i kind of don't feel like anything that I've done in my life that I feel was like the word from the Lord. Do you know what I mean? Interesting. I, I feel mm -hmm. like the decisions that I've made in my life, I kind of, I'm like, okay, this, I make a decision, but I, but I'm praying and asking God for help and doors open. And I know that that sounds like so simple and like cliche, but I think that if doors were to shut, for example, when I, okay, so whenever I finally applied to move to Australia, things happened like that. I decided right. I was going and then I moved in six months. 
Um, and then That's also, awesome. and then also <laughs> for, <laughs> <laughs> and then also for, um, whenever I, uh, was over there in Australia and I had been there for a while, I finally got there and then I was like, okay, God, I'm here. I actually need you to help me because I have no idea why I'm here. I didn't know what yeah. stream, what, why I was, what I was doing in that stream. You want to know what I was doing there? I was holding camera cables and I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, this isn't why I need to be here. But because I believe that I was honest with, with where I wanted to be, knowing that I didn't want to be there and I just was obedient. I really do believe that obedience is important. Um, wow. I think that because I was obedient, I think that God continued to show me. He really did show me because things happened right. that I had nothing to do with. But it's because I was there and I took that step out and I was open. I was obedient, which is hard for me. Can I say that, Anagri? I You want to know, I, I use this as a reference. If For anyone listening, if you guys know basketball, American basketball, I'm sure you do. I'm sure some of you guys are like, we don't care about American sports, but in basketball, <laughs> like I played that growing up and um, there's something called uh, the sixth man. And the sixth okay. man is the person that sits on the bench and is the first person to go in when um, they need a sub. Right. And I had to learn how to be that. And that was hard for me. Um, but that required obedience and taking steps and all of that. So whenever visas um towards the end of my third year whenever like visas weren't happening and stuff i had to understand that maybe these doors were closing and then that's when i took that step to move to california and two weeks before i moved my boss came and asked me what my plans were and then he offered me a job <laughs> so you know like i can't plan that i think i think again not to toot your own horn because you hate it when that happens but i i just think it's it's so true in life right if you weren't ready to fold those cables you wouldn't be working at hillsong channel now <laughs> right yeah right and a lot of people want to kind of jump to uh, being the production oversight of a large filming area but they're not ready to fold the cables yeah and and I think that's a huge part of, you know, stepping out in life that it doesn't always look so glamorous when you step out into your vision or dreams. No, not it at all. It doesn't look glamorous. And um but it's always worth it in the in, in the long run. I'd actually say that there are probably very few things that I've ever stepped out to do where there wasn't some type of um what's the word? Some type of tension. Right. Or uh, what could feel like backlash in the beginning. I think right. that anytime we're bold and, and take a step towards, I don't know, like something we want to achieve or our dreams or whatever, there's always going to be some kind of like this. But we have to get over that because it's not always yep. going to be like that. But I think that that's because it feels uncomfortable. Yeah. It was it was hard moving to Australia. It was hard moving to California. It was a lot of things are hard, but it doesn't mean that it's it's not eventually going to even out and be, I don't know, like easier. I love that. Hey, let's change gears. I want to I want to ask you this. So when when you were in Sydney, yeah. um, you started boxing and I know you won a couple of championships over there. Mm -hmm. And from what I know, you started for the first time in Sydney. Is that right? I actually didn't. I started no? I started in Kansas City, but. I was very early on. I had only had two fights in Kansas City, and then, I, and then I moved to Australia. So I was, was very that? early on. Yeah. What was that process like? Because I mean, <clears throat> even if we're talking about intimidation, right? You're walking <laughs> into a place where there's people way further along than you. How did you deal with that? I'm a competitive person. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that, I think that that plays a big part. Um, I don't I don't look at people that are further along than me as like something to be intimidated by, but something to be excited by. I love that. I love I I love like walking into gyms, like knowing that I'm 
going to be growing from these people because I, I love being the, the dumbest person in the room, the, right. the least experienced in the room. And I don't know, like person with the least amount of money, because what that's going to teach me is how to maybe do these things from these people that are more experienced or have been mm. there. So when I came into the room, yeah, like I was definitely very inexperienced, but I would not back down. I have a very tough spirit. Um, I think that that's something that I've just kind of always had inside of me. And uh, there was times even like in sparring where like this, like, I don't even know what to say in kilos. So I'm not going to try because you said that I switch like this, like a hundred and like 85 pound man, like okay. knocked me down with 90. a punch. 90 kilos. Yeah. About. Yeah. Like knocked me down with like a really big punch and everyone like freaked out. And then I got back up and they were going to have me come out of the ring. And I kept fighting him because I, I, I think it fueled me more. I know this sounds kind of weird, but I was just like, I'm just not going to back down. I'm just going to keep going. And I'm going to, and, and then I did, I eventually learned and went on to fight some state fight, some state titles over there. And, um, it was definitely because of my team that sharpened me because they're better than me. Yeah. What made you keep getting up? Um, or what's running through your mind at that moment? What's running through my mind is that I'm going to beat this guy. <laughs> like that's what was, <laughs> what was running through my mind was like, I'm just, I'm not going to quit. I love and that. I think I've always had that in, in my spirit. I'm just, I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to, you know, unless someone's dragging me out of the ring, I'm just going to. I'm going to keep doing this. I love that. I, I think just taking two things away from what you said is kind of, you're just so focused on what you wanted to achieve at that moment. And then you're like, I'm not going to quit. And I guess in life, you could really put it down to those two things. You may not have all the skills and all the proficiencies you want right now, but I really do think if you have a spirit of staying uber focused on what you want to get out of life, yeah. Um, and then just deciding I'm not going to quit. I mean, who wins, right? It's the yeah. person who doesn't back down. Absolutely. Absolutely. The you know person what? person who wins. I, I'm reading a yeah, book right now, speaking of books. And, and, uh, and, uh, the, the um, author of it is this guy named David Goggins. Okay. Right. And he, I just have to say this because I think sometimes people think that it's like this, uh, genetic thing oh well you have that in you but i don't have that in me no it's a mental thing it's like the ability to overcome mental blockage or challenges or or bad thinking or toxic thinking or past experiences right. and so on it could be anybody like this man was um the, the book by the way is called uh can't hurt me he's like a, okay. a retired navy seal he's also like an ultra marathoner like done, like these are like a hundred mile races. It's insanity. Okay. But, um, what he talked about is he was like, uh, 200 or like a hundred pounds overweight that he had to lose in three months to become a Navy SEAL to begin with. But what he, anyways, the whole premise of the book is to just tell people that it's not just like this thing necessarily that's in someone or like this, like ultra athlete that's inside somebody. It's him making the decision that he's going to put his shoes on and he's going to go outside and he's going to run. Hmm. And uh, I, I love that he talks so much about like overcoming like the mental blockage um, that I think a lot of people go through. Like it's it's for me. You're right. It comes down to like I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to give up. You have to overcome that in your own mind um, because if you allow all of the the self doubt and the talking or the like I said past experiences to speak to you, right. you won't do anything. So true. You'll live paralyzed you your live. entire life. Oh, 100%. You can definitely live captive to your past and your experiences and where you've been. Um, I think there is some sort of power in just deciding that today's a new day. You know, today's a brand new day. This day has never existed. And yeah. I can step out and I don't have to be bound by my past anymore. Um, and I can make decisions to step out. And you can achieve what you want to achieve. I love yeah. that. I know that sounds really simple, but I... Like I said, I think that sometimes the 
things that people believe are complex. I think they're very simple things. I love that. Hey, so we'll start wrapping up, but with that, what would you say to someone? Let's just say, let's, cause you're from the Midwest. What would you say <laughs> to someone you're having coffee with from the Midwest and they're kind of scared to step out and pursue their dreams? What would you say to them? What would I say to them? Mm-hmm. I would say that, sure, it, it, I'm, I wouldn't lie to them. I'd say, yes, in the beginning, any decision that you make, anything that you step out into is going to be uncomfortable. But you will be so much more grateful for who you will become from that than the uncomfortableness that you would feel by not doing anything at all. Because even though you might feel uncomfortable in the short window, it will save you from a lifetime of uncomfortableness because you just didn't make the decision. Right. Um, so short-term pain versus long-term pain um, is kind of like the way that I would describe it. Uh, because nobody wants to live with doubt right. or, or, or like regret. Oh, I wish, what if I had or so on. Um, yeah. So that's probably what I would tell them. Sure, there's a short, short-term pain, but it's so much more worth that short-term pain than long-term pain at the end of the day. Beautiful. Well, Jess, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone who is listening. I hope that this inspired you and equipped you to step out into your dreams, purpose, vision, whatever you want to achieve, you can do it. Um, I, I think what Jess said really well today is just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Whatever you, whatever that thing is that you think you want to pursue, just keep it simple. Do the small steps to get today. And a year from now, you'll be surprised at how far you've got. With that, see ya. Goodbye.